Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use height just like Paul Cole does. I got inspired when I was watching the recent British Open tournament, both the semis and the finals. Uh, and in particular, with the, in the semis, he used height so well against Mustafa Asal that uh, I figured, hey, we got to show everyone how they can also use height because it's just such a beautiful way to play the game. Here's what you can expect. It's simple. Learn exactly what it takes to use height like Cole. And if you remember from the previous video that I shared, I went over this little model, this four factor model, technical, tactical, physical, and mental. And it takes all of these factors and more truthfully to use height effectively and to train yourself to use height effectively. Now, when you think about the nuances, there are lots. So I put them here. You can reference this later. The idea, let's, let's talk about each segment, each component. So technically, when you're under pressure, you want to approach the ball. You will naturally end up approaching the ball with a more direct path. So the traditional J-shape pattern that people would practice isn't really as effective because it's inefficient. And you can't always rotate effectively and you can't always land on the correct leg. If you watch any of the top pros, they all take direct paths to the ball. And what that also does is that it allows you to take the ball early, which when you want to play a cross court lob is actually perfect. You want to take the ball early and when you take the ball out in front, your racket face is naturally open so that you can get under it. You always want to start low to high. A mistake that people make is that they start with a big swing and then they drop their racket down and then that completely throws timing off. So you want to start lower when you're under a lot of pressure, go with whichever foot by taking a more direct path. You want to make contact with the ball in front of your body and just kind of guide the ball up. Now, if you're under a tremendous amount of pressure, you probably won't be able to really guide the ball up. When you're under less pressure, you can follow through it more. So here's where you want to be able to kind of use your momentum and your energy as you're running or moving into the ball. And then as you step with the lunge, you want to transfer that force through the forearm, through the fingers and the hand into the racket. You're not doing this with the wrist. It's a little guide with the forearm and the hand to get the ball up using the body's overall energy and momentum. Now, tactically, you need to recognize when to play the lob. The, generally speaking, unless your movement is very refined and the timing and the flow of your movement is very refined, if you're under a tremendous amount of pressure, hitting the lob is actually quite challenging. So then you want to probably just counter drop the ball. If you are not under an incredible amount of pressure and your movement is, um, you know, your movement is relatively sound, then you can go for the lob. I'm going to ask an obvious question. What is the goal of the lob? Well, the first goal is to give time to yourself to recover because presumably you're hitting it from a, uh, when you're under some pressure. You can, and I'm talking specifically front of the court. When you're in the back of the court, you can actually use the lob for the second goal, which applies to the front as well, obviously, is that you can use it to reverse pressure onto your opponent. So from the back, you know, you're, you could hit a nice cross court lob, for example, and if you get a good height, good angle, the ball can fade into the back corner. The same thing can happen from the front. And interestingly, through a ton of practice, you can do the same thing when you're under a tremendous amount of pressure in the back court and you're chasing down a ball and you have to hit a back wall lob. With time and practice, you can actually make that back wall lob so that it comes and it gets tight. It hits the front wall and then it just hugs the side wall. So lots of possibilities with the lob. Step one, release the pressure or relieve your, the pressure from yourself and then ideally reverse the pressure onto your opponent physically just like most other aspects of squash and most sports you need a very strong core you need not just core strength but you need a lot of stability and you need dynamic stability you need your feet and all the little muscles in your body to be active so that you can be stable you need leg strength you need the ability to decelerate and accelerate effectively there is this idea of what's called neuromuscular coordination so it's the idea of sequencing your muscles so when we talk about flow of movement you want to make sure that you know you get to a ball and you don't stop and then hit you need to be activating your muscles effectively and power comes best from the ground up 
not just from the arm or the upper body. Uh, you need lower back strength, obviously, every time you're bending, your lower back has to support you. So exercises like deadlifts, for example, or even body weight single leg deadlifts are fantastic because you're working on balance and you're working lower uh, your lower back muscles and your mobility and flexibility. You obviously need forearm and wrist strength and coordination. And mentally, when you think about the lob, what you really need is trust or faith in your own ability to reset the ball. And the challenge that most people have mentally is that we think, oh, I'm under pressure, I'm gonna just smash the ball and I'm gonna beat my opponent because they're not gonna be expecting it. The challenge is that when you're already under pressure, it's very difficult to hit an accurate quality ball from that position, especially when you hit it hard. And then tactically, if you hit a ball hard when you're under pressure, you're negating or you're going against your goal, <laughs> which is to buy yourself time and to reset on the tee. So the harder I hit when I'm under pressure means that the faster the ball is going to my opponent, which means the sooner they have to hit. And I'm actually going to create a video on that, so stay tuned for that. So let's watch a rally from the British Open semi-final between Cole and Asal, and we're going to watch how effectively Cole neutralizes the pressure through the lob although it does take a couple of attempts but he doesn't give up so let's see how this goes guys jockeying for position Cole hits a slightly loose ball which initiates the initial pressure great defending he's see how set he was on the tee Asal's really on the attack there's the back wall lob not super tight but now he's under a fair bit of pressure there was less pressure on that last one and there he reversed it he forced the boast from Asal and then he won the rally so let's break this one down uh, gradually step by step so you see this is the initial shot where Cole hits it a little bit loose and then when you come here Asal is getting on this volley and there are a couple of things we need to talk about when we're looking at technique as well as uh, mental stuff Cole is watching the ball watching what Asal is doing and he's initiating his split step in order to have efficient movement just as Asal is about to strike the ball so you see over here as the frames go, Asal is just about to strike the ball. Cole is slightly, not in the air, but he's slightly off the ground so that he can plant his feet as soon as he knows where the ball is going. And you see his head is already looking at the ball. It's his eyes, have, his head is turned, his eyes are watching the ball. And then he puts his feet down in the pattern that he needs. So his left foot needs to push him to the front right as soon as his brain recognizes that the ball is going in that direction. And then how does he do? He takes that push, shuffle, and you notice he's going open stance. It's the most natural stance to go in in this situation. He doesn't have the time to turn and go closed, for example. His racket face is low. He's not starting with a big backswing. And the, the racket prep is low, rather. He's not starting with a big backswing. And his racket face is not closed. A lot of people have a tendency to try to go closed when they're defending, and then the ball doesn't go up, obviously. And when he hits it, you'll notice that he kind of snaps his, uh, his forearm and his wrist a little bit. There's no follow through because he's under a tremendous amount of pressure. And you see he's stepping diagonally forward and he's gonna make contact with the ball somewhere in the front. And there's contact with the ball diagonally in line with his body. And you see there's no real follow through from that position. It's just, look at, look at the strength of the forearm and the wrist there. The racket face is open and controlled. It's not flopping or closed. And it's just a strong forearm kind of wrist snap aligned with the momentum that he used to get to the ball. Obviously, he didn't try to counterattack that, which is something that a lot of lesser uh, skilled or both mentally, technically, tactically, physically players do, is they try to attack when they're under too much pressure. He recognized that he needs to buy time and he goes for the lift. And we already saw this, but look how effective that strategy was. He's back on the tee, totally settled. Look at that, totally settled before Asal hits his next shot. And then the rally can continue from that position. And over here, Cole goes for the cross. Asal's being very aggressive and he does that well, tight ball. And Cole's under pressure over here. He lobs off the back. And like I said, what you can do in with time and a ton of practice is get this back wall lob so that the ball actually hits the front wall 
closer to the opposite side. So it's like a cross court lob from the front of the court. Same idea. Ball hits the front wall and then bounces and hugs the side wall. So that's another really, really fun and frustrating way for your opponent <laughs> to actually have the pressure reversed on them. And now Asal is in a commanding position. He gets on that ball nice and early. And what we see here is as Asal is getting ready to strike the ball, Cole is again taking his split step and his eyes are on the ball. He takes his split step. Initially, he actually splits thinking that Asal might be hitting a drive, hence the hesitation. And then he starts accelerating forward. And now notice over here, racket face is not super high. It's, he's coming in relatively low. The natural stepping in this case was to go with his right leg, which is close stance. So again, there's no deliberate thing that I have to go open or I have to go closed. What is happening is that he's taking that direct path to the ball and his contact point is again going to be in front and he's again going to use more of the forearm and the wrist with his momentum, sequencing all of the movement and the float together. And what you'll see is that because he's under a significant amount of pressure here as he takes that ball. See, look, racket face is still open. He takes it out in front. Not a massive follow through, but his left hand also comes down onto the ground in order to support himself. So anytime you're under a lot of pressure, a lot of players put their hand down. And then from here, he tries to buy height, but Asal does well. He's a, he's a big guy and he stayed up in the court because he knew that Cole was under a lot of pressure. He looks to volley that ball again. One little thing I want to point out for all of you guys is that when you're moving out of this front corner, it could be any front corner, a lot of players have a tendency to turn and run. The challenge with that, and I'm sure you've experienced this at some point in your life, the challenge is that it's extremely hard if you turn around and start running, if your opponent hits a cross court or they hit something short again, because your, moment, your momentum is only going to that back right corner. Making a sudden shift becomes very, very challenging and you'll get burned uh, if you do that. So you look here, he's coming, he's backstepping, sidestepping, Asal goes short again. And this time, Cole is not under as much pressure, but still many similarities. He goes with the natural leg, which in this case is open stance. He's taking the ball out in front of him. He's starting his racket prep low. His swing is starting low and it's gonna go low to high. And what you'll notice over here is that he has that open face, but this time when he swings, he follows through with his racket a little bit more to really guide that ball because he's not under a ton of pressure. So if you're under a tremendous amount of pressure, don't try to take this massive swing because you won't be able to. You have to sequence your movement and your energy and just kind of release that energy at the end with the forearm and a bit of the wrist. Uh, Rami would do that a lot. He'd kind of run in and like snap that wrist up at the last second. So that's how you want to put the put your transfer rate force into the lob. Now, someone might say, hey, he's not under a ton of pressure over there. Why didn't he just attack the ball? Well, Cole knows that he's already been under a lot of pressure. He just wants to reset this rally and get into a comfortable position where he can choose to attack when he wants to attack, when he's stable and he feels comfortable because he probably wants to create patterns and set the game up in a way that makes sense for him. So now we keep going. And this was the clip we, uh, we saw earlier where Asal gets the reverse pressure. So a couple of things to note over here. Number one, he, Cole uses tremendous amount of height. What that does is obviously it takes, takes the ball out of your opponent's reach, but especially in the glass court and in most courts, there is a lot of there are a lot of bright tube lights at the top, so the ball can get lost in them. You know, you look up and your eyes kind of start hurting, and you see white everywhere. So you can actually use that to your advantage by using height with the lob. So Cole not only gets height. But then you come over here and check out that target on the side wall right there. Catches the side wall and then the ball fades in at the angle right there. And obviously Asal knows he has no choice but to play that back wall lob. And just for completeness, you probably remember this from my other video on patterns. Here he puts the hold in and goes cross. If you didn't watch my video on patterns, I will put a link to it over here. And patterns specific to Cole and how to think about your game as holistically. Let's talk about some common mistakes. 
most people, well not most people, I take that back, a lot of people get the tactical context wrong. They try to hit hard out of pressure or they try to attack when they're with like trickle bows or something fancy with a hold when they're under pressure. And usually that results in a tin or a loose ball. And then you're doing more work or obviously you've lost a point outright. The other thing is that because when people don't have the sequencing right of their energy and their momentum, it's really hard to hit a lob when you're under a lot of pressure. So some people think, hey, anytime I'm under pressure, I need to hit a lob. That's not the case. You want to hit a lob when you're not under, let's say, 10 out of 10 pressure, unless you have that technique set. You saw even Cole, when he was under a tremendous amount of pressure, he did go for the lob to buy time, but it wasn't accurate enough. And then us all volley the next shot again. So something to be mindful of. The other th common mistake is that people sometimes if they've you know been brought up and trained in a traditional movement path they always try to take a, a j-shape pattern or they try to hit with closed stance i see a lot of uh, some juniors that i've coached in the past try to step in their right-handed players stepping into the front right corner so on their forehand but they deliberately try to go closed stance with their left leg that actually ties up your body a little bit and it's hard to get that rotation to hit a cross court lob. So I would say go with the natural stance and oftentimes go with the open stance and don't try to loop your body around with the J pattern. Just take a direct path to it and hit the ball in front of you. The other thing that people do is they don't have, they haven't practiced the skill to hit the ball early. So a lot of people might accelerate onto a shot, but then they end up hitting it late. So that then completely you know makes the technique and everything significantly more challenging because you're stuck back here and you're trying to use your wrist to do something and taking the ball cross when it's behind you is extremely difficult um, so something to be mindful of is if you're getting on the ball early take it out in front of you like i said a lot of people start with a high racket prep when you're under pressure it's inefficient to start with a high racket prep you want to go in low um, we already talked about number five which is hitting the ball too hard and then number six is is interesting because people try to hit the perfect shot but you don't need to hit the perfect shot if the goal remember the second I ideal outcome is to reverse the pressure but the first and most important one is to buy time assuming that you're not under a tremendous amount of pressure in which case it's the counter drop so if you're trying to buy time it doesn't need to be perfect on the sidewall hitting just under the out of court line and fading into the back. You just need to get height on it. Even if it comes a little bit more into the mid court, you've given yourself time to recover to the tee and you give yourself a chance to continue to play on in the rally. So folks, if you enjoyed that, I hope you learned a ton about how to actually implement a quality lob out of the front part of the court. If you enjoyed that, if you would like some guidance with your own game and you want something that's holistic from the ground up, comprehensive, customized to your game specifically based on video that you would send me, send me an email at ahad at arproformance.com. But please only do so if you are keen and you want to put in consistent work, you want to work directly with me and you appreciate premium services for quality and effectiveness. If that's the case, I look forward to hearing from you. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Please like the video, give it a thumbs up if in fact you do like it. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback on the video and any of the technical pointers. And then when you practice the stuff, I would love to hear how effective it is for you. Share the video with a family or friend, someone who you think might enjoy it. That goes a long way. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.